Hi there. Welcome to Crafting with Patty B. This is our second episode. Um, glad you could join us. Thanks. Um, today we're going to start out with crafting cards, card making 101. Um, I thought I would start with the basics and then we can work up to uh, more difficult um, things and more tools and gadgets and gizmos and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, the first thing um, we're going to talk about is the card base. And I usually buy packages of cards with the envelopes. I wait for a sale and get them that way. That's the cheapest way. But you can also make your own cards using cardstock. What you want to do is you want to get a package of 65 pound weight. And so this is a red one from Michaels. Uh, Michaels usually has a pretty good stock of, of card stock. Um, and I like, I like their brand. Um, and again, they have a buy one, get one at 50% off. Then I stock up. They have the plain mat matted. It doesn't have a shine to it. And they come in 11 by five and a half, but they also have packages of foil covered um, cardstock. And I use the foil in the backgrounds of a lot of my cards because it just gives that little extra pop. And the most interesting cards usually have layers to them. Right? Uh, so they're kind of dimensional for me. But you can also make just plain plain cards with without a lot of dimension. Um, This is one that I made, and you can see I ripped the tissue paper, I added ribbons, so that gives it some dimension, but also different textures. Um, so you build them in layers, right? So you want a background layer. But before we get into that, let's talk about the different sizes of cards. And I like to use a five by six and a half inch card. Um, you can also use five by seven. Um, the five by six and a half is good because sometimes your scraps or your papers are smaller than 12 by 12. Um, so it's more versatile. And um, so that's the five by six. They come in, this is called portrait when you have your card open to the side that's called a portrait so many of your paintings are portrait side if that helps you remember but you can also turn your <clears throat> your card this way so this is the same card but now it's in a, what they call a landscape um, a landscape you can think about like a horizon um, so those are the two different orientations of cards. They both take the same size envelope, same size papers, embellishments. You can also 
get a smaller card. And this is a four and a half inch by five and uh, three quarters inch or 0.75. And here we have the same card, smaller in a landscape and a portrait. You can't get as many layers on the smaller cards. And if you're going to sell them, I find that people like bigger cards. They feel like they're getting more for their money. And really, you're putting as much work into them. Um, the amount of materials is, is a little bit different. But um, yeah. Anyway, that same size can also come in what we call a tent. So that opens up from the, you know, from the bottom up. Same size. But different, different orientation. So they're all the same. So here's a piece of cardstock that I cut. And I cut this into a 10 by six and a half inch because when you fold it it's going to become the same as your portrait five by six and a half mm says she loves the craft cart i don't think you can read the comments but um... can't read the comments so thank you sunny uh honey that's great Sunny. Um, <laughs> not going to be perfect here, I can tell you. <laughs> so anyway, so saw me fold this with my fingers. And that gets a pretty good, pretty good fold, but it's still kind of open. So this is called a bone folder. It's it's kind of a piece of, I guess it's plastic. Um, and, and what you can do is you can, you know, run this down the side and now it gets a better crease it doesn't open as much 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 crisper more professional um and you can write if you're going to put something on the front of it you can write the size um because it'll be covered and that'll help you to remember when you start cutting the papers that are going to go on top i also cut papers that I put on the inside. And this is just regular computer uh, copy paper from a printer. Um, and that goes inside the card. Gives it that extra, just gives it a little bit of an extra um, pizzazz and a better writing space. So what you do with that is you only attach it to the top, the front, um, I usually put a piece of tape here and then a piece of tape under there. And um, so this is free and this is attached. And that works fine when you're opening it. And if you're using it in a uh, landscape, you still attach it to the top because the, the paper will go with the card and the bottom will stay down. And it just gives you a nice writing space for your message. I don't put any messages in my in my cards. I like to write them. And I find messages everywhere. I mean, I plagiarize and find something I like in another card, and I'll use it um, as part of mine. That's okay. Um, yeah. So let me talk a little bit about some of the tools that I use. And this is a Fisker's paper cutter. Uh, this is the one I recommend. It it has these sliding, um, I forget what they call them, but anyway, it has a little a little um, razor in there that'll cut your paper. And when you open the side up, it becomes a twelve inch across. How much does that thing cost? Um, this. I think it's around 23, 25, 27, 20 something odd. Go with an odd number. 
Is um, it safe for children? Can children use it? Or is it dangerous? No, it's safe for children. The uh, Here's the little... Uh, safety? Rate. Is it like a safety thing? Yeah. And it, what it does is you, you push down on it and it goes into a little groove that cuts Ooh. your paper. Um, yeah. So, the, you know... You can try. You can use scissors and a ruler to cut your paper. That's fine, but you'll never yeah. get as crisp a, a, an edge as you will using this one. I also have a large guillotine uh, cutter that I use. That one is dangerous for kids because you could cut a finger off. Yeah, uh, that's what Bob Ross just said. It's safer than the ones we used to have in school. Oh my gosh, those things could cut somebody's arm off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. I remember those things. They were scary. They are scary. And you know what? They make your, your cards messy, too, with all that blood. Oh, I'm getting cringe. Amazing <laughs> <laughs> how many of us survived, huh? Yeah, if you put too much paper in those old-fashioned cutters, uh, it, like, just would never come out right anyway. Like, you can only do a certain amount of pieces of paper at a time. Yes, that's true. That's very true. It's it's great for like cardboard or um, I get magnet sheets where I put um, my dies on and to store them and so that'll cut them straight. Uh, whereas the, that would these blades will wear out. I think you can buy these in packages of two, and you can get these at Michaels. And that's one of the reasons I like Fiskars is because you can pretty much. I think Joanne's carries Fiskars. You can pretty much, uh, you know, you get them on the internet. Um, so I usually have some extra. And you'll know when you need to replace it because you'll start to get jagged edges. Um, um, yeah, MM says she loves her cutter and she said it has a protective guard. So, yes, it's safe because MM does craft. a little protective guard. Yep. Yeah. I see that. Okay. But, um yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, it does. It's it's a very safe cutter, um, and it stores pretty easily. It's flat. You can, uh, you know, take it with you when you go places. It, it's not hard to to carry. It looks lightweight too. You can put it in your suitcase when you come visit us. Yeah, yeah. Though I wouldn't put it in my suitcase. I'd do it in my carry on. Some things are just too valuable to put in your suitcase. <laughs> Put the jewelry in the suitcase. <laughs> the cutter with you. Okay. Anyway, so um, there, there's a few weights of paper. And as I said, there's a 65 pound weight. This is 65. It's, it, it's about the same weight as a regular card, you know, that you would buy in the store. Um, and so when you're creasing them, it's good to remember that these are made of fibers. It's made of tree fiber. Um, it's recycled, but that's basically what they are. So, um, this, you know, you, the slower you, the thicker the weight the, and the slower you fold it, the more chance you give it to, for those fibers to stretch and not, um, not crack. Um, so when I do my scoring, um, and I'll show you that later, uh, I don't press as hard and I do more uh, several scores instead of doing one hard one. And that's because it gives those papers time, time to bend and conform. So then there's this kind of paper. Um, this is a 12 by 12 sheet. You can buy these separately. And um, these are good for layering uh, on top of other papers. They fold pretty well. They cut easy and all of that. And then this is another form of cardstock. Now, this I got from Michaels. That it was originally $9.99. They had a half price sale, so I got it at $5. This is cardstock. When you look at the, the weight, of this, it's pretty darn thick. So, two there. 
You can see the difference. Uh, but the reason that I, I like the packet, the packet pads, they call them pads of paper, is that they're coordinated. So you don't have to come up with a, you know, matching colors and have a whole lot of different papers, although I do. Uh, but I will show you some of the paper here. This is one sided paper. So it comes with some flats, you know, just regular, uh, you know, no design for backgrounds and layering. And then it has all kinds of designs that you can, you know, you can cut these out and use the strip. Uh, you could use, you know, the words, time to celebrate, makes a nice um, saying. And then in the back, they have, usually they come with these. Um, and these are, uh, you know, pieces that you can cut out. And these make great fronts to your cards, um, for sure. Sometimes I embellish them. I Usually I do embellish them. I make it my own. I put um, sparkle, more sparkles or um, make them shine or add ribbons or bows or what have you. There's also... Uh, cardstock that is 110 and that's a pretty heavy duty cardstock there's not as many uses for the 110 so i tend to stay away from that um but if you were making say a box something that needed a little bit more sturdiness to it you you might choose a 110 weight um and Michael sells 110 too. So be aware of that. And also be aware of how many pieces you're getting. So this circle usually tells you how many pages. Because um, some of them are only 25. Uh, the, the fancier papers are 20, about 25. Um, I like to have these on stock on hand in a lot of different colors. And you could get these singly. Like, you know, um, when Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's or somebody's has a sale, you could just pick up single colors so that you have some kind of a, a little stockpile to match um, some of your papers. Um, okay, so let me talk about... Oh, MM said you're really great at explaining things in great detail. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, all right. So let me talk a little bit about how I put a card together since we're talking about paper. So I have a container with cards that have little paper clips on them. So these are all going to be card fronts. So what I have here is some cutouts that I got uh, that I liked. I found this paper to coordinate with it and a piece of heavier cardstock. So let me show you how I'm going to put this together. Oh, wait, I should talk about adhesives first. Okay. Because that's important. Uh, the last, last on the first show, I talked about this. And this is called Art Glitter Glue. And it's not glittery. It it's uh, the name of the. This is the glue that changed your life, right? This, this is the glue. Is the, oh, this is like me and this. Glue. Did you send me this glue? I feel like I have this glue. You sent me glue, and I was like, "What's this for?" You're like, "Oh, it's just some the best glue." Yes. Then that's it. Yes. I should have wrote on it best glue. Well, this one. Then you know. This one says. This one says original tacky glue. The one you sent me. Is that the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Okay, so tap oh. glue is good for, for kids because that'll, it's less expensive, um, but it's thicker. It's a thicker glue. So if you're using construction paper or something thick like that, you, you know, kids could use that. Yeah. It's like a, a good all purpose glue, but for making cards <laughs> and, and doing. <laughs> So now I'm going to have to send you this. 
<laughs> MM says crafters are picky about what they use. I'm like, whose mom sends them glue with like no explanation in the box? I'm like, wow, okay, thanks, mom, for the glue. <laughs> You're welcome, honey. Could have been. It could have been. Uh, I think I sent you some tacky stuff for posters too, didn't I? <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, no, Perla, I think she stole that. She's using that for her posters. Yeah, 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 well, I think, I, yeah. So anyway, so this is called Art Glitter Glue, and I get this on Amazon. Um, and you, it comes in different sizes. You have to be careful at what time of year you get it, because if you live in a cold climate, they will not uh, mail it to you because it will lose its properties. So just to be aware of that, I keep an extra big bottle on hand and then I refill this bottle because this one is easier for my hand to hold. Um, yeah. So then you get this little tip that comes with it. What It's separate. So you want to buy this little tip and it has a pin in the top of it. And I put a little doodad hanging off it, a piece of ribbon. Um, because once you take, once you take the pin out, oh, I just broke the pin. Hold on. Get a different one. Okay. That's, guitar straight, guitar players break strings while they're live all the time. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> well, I got another one. Yeah. So anyway, so it has this little, little pin. And you, you need to buy this because this, it comes with a little metal top. This will um, not rust. Like you could buy, a, you know, a sewing pin, but if you put it in there, it'll rust and it'll uh, make you glue, you know, it'll taint you glue like a rust color. So it's worth investing in that. And, and I just put a little doodad, like I said, so that I can find it on my table easier when I pull it out. You move this out of the way. Okay, so that glue and this tape. Oh yeah, and if anybody has questions for Patty, don't be shy, she loves questions. Thanks. Uh, so this I get from Amazon and I get a specific size. I get a three eighths inch thickness that's three eighths stitch and i do that because a lot of my uh my folds when you, we get into the more intricate uh flaps and details um are a half an inch and this is just smaller than that so it's it's not as critical to align it as or as difficult as it would be for a half inch on a half inch fold um, because you do not want your tape on your fold line. You want it right next to your fold line. Um, and, and so this works because it gives you some little bit of wiggle room to do that. I also have a thick tape for when I'm doing big projects. This is an inch wide. And I have some thinner tape. But these are the two. These are my two go-tos. The uh, three-eighths and the one-inch uh, on Amazon. This, I buy in bulk. You can get one, I think, for $7. But if you buy five or more, they're like five sixty each or something like that. So it's a little bit of a savings if you use a lot. Um, and then you don't have to worry, you know, about... Um, getting the delivery and all that kind of thing. A lot of a lot of crafters use the uh, the glue sticks. Uh, I find that the glue stick adhesive wears out in time. I, I started using glue sticks and um, I found that the you know after time it dried up and things fell off. So uh, not my favorite, but it's good for kids, uh, projects and things that aren't meant to last a long time or have to go through the mail and survive uh, intact. So I have that. And then for my ribbons, 
I don't even look at this thing. This is so well, so well used. I use this super fabric adhesive. It's Aileen's super fabric adhesive. And I use this for my ribbons. Um, and if I use any cloth or anything like that, um, because it's thicker. And again, it, it'll, it'll really adhere. The drawback is that it's hard to get out of this tube. Look at my poor tube. Um, and it, it takes a while to dry. So I end up using, I use clips. And you can use clothespins. I just happened to find these. Um, and this will hold like the bow in place where I want it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, until it's until it's dry. So I always have those on hand. All right, that's about it for and he oh dimensionals. You gotta have dimensionals. A lot of the stuff you can get at the dollar store. Uh, so I, I think this one might have come from the dollar store, and these are just little uh, squares. This one is also squares, and I got this from scrapbook.com. Great resource, but you have to pay postage, and it takes a little longer to get here, so you have to plan ahead. But the reason I, I use two different ones is if you can look at the thicknesses, they're different. This one is a lot thinner than this one. So... <clears throat> I'm always aware of the depth of my cards to be able to go through the regular post. So a lot of flowers and stuff I don't put on because they they wouldn't just, you know, go through without a lot of extra postage and having to be hand stamped and that kind of thing. And also, sometimes you want things to come out at different layers. And, and I'll show you how that works later. Um, so, yeah, if you use the ones from the dollar store, I will say the adhesive on those can sometimes dry up. So I just use my favorite, uh, a little bit of this on the back. And um, that helps that helps keep it there forever. Oh, Bob Ross said, what are the dimensionals for? So when you want to have something to pop out. So. Let's say. I've got these two hearts. And I want to put them. On my card. Right, so I might, I'll glue this one down and I want to put this one on top, but I want it to stand out a little bit. So I would take one of these squares then have our double-sided adhesives. So it sticks to the, it's already on there. Um, and when I put that on here, and I would use more dots than what I'm showing you. I don't know if you can. Let's see. Can you see? It sticks out. So it, it gives it like a three-dimensional um, look. Makes it pop. You've probably seen them on uh, like Hallmark cards and stuff when they have, you know, when things seem to come out. Like in 3D, if you look behind them, you'll see, you'll see that's what they're using to to make those stand out in front of one another. Good question, Bob. Thank you. Um, yeah. So when I'm doing something simple like this card, which you know is going to get put together, it's not finished yet, and it's got a simple background. Uh, and I, I would glue this onto here because it's thin paper. And then I would put the dimensionals on the back. And that will make it stand out a little bit. Um, with, oops, upside down. Which 
which will give it more oomph, if that's a word, um, than just everything being flat. And especially when you're only using a couple of different layers of paper, uh, which the smaller cards tend to do. I like that. Are you working on Valentine's Day cards today? I have Valentine's Day cards, yeah. Okay. Um, I do. Lorraine O'Leary's here. Oh, hi, Lorraine. Welcome. Thanks for coming. All right. So um, let me put together a, a, this simple card for you, for you guys first. Are you oh, sending me a Valentine's Day card? Am I getting one? You want a Valentine's Day card? Wink, wink. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll do that one. Hold on. All right. So let me just show you what I've done. So I, I went to the dollar store and they have two for a dollar. Actually, it's a dollar 25. So I think it's false advertising, but you know, we're nitpicking. Anyway, so I got <laughs> this card and, you know, inside it's got a nice pink piece of cardboard. I could cut out the saying and use that on a different card if I want. But the reason I picked this card is because I cut out these cupcakes. And there are six different cupcakes there. Plus I get an envelope, not bad. And here's the cupcakes cut out. You can see they cut out really nicely because it's, you know, on cardstock, it's thick. And I can now turn that into a card. Wow. You bought, okay, so you bought the cards at the dollar store. Yeah. Just so that you could cut them up and yeah. use them for more cards. Yeah. So, I mean, the reason I did that is because, you know, it, it's the embellishments that cost a lot of money on the cards. A and B, you know, recycling cards. I mean, if somebody takes the time to buy you a card, um, instead of just you know throwing it away when when the time is up, when you deem the time is up, and that happens. Sometimes. I can't throw away any of your cards. I save them all. Yeah, I'm not good at throwing away cards. Really, from like I save so many cards, and it's just because I'm so. Well, one of the ways that you can is by recycling them. So I, this is another one I bought. Look how many hearts are on there. Now, I wouldn't have, this is for a son. I wouldn't have bought this for my son. Um, you know, it's cute, but it's not him. But again, you know, look at all the words inside that I can, that I can use to cut up. Happy Valentine's Day. Great. Um, son, I can put that on a different card, one that's more appropriate for him. And then I have all these cards that I can cut out. And how about this one? So I could cut out, I could cut out this jar. The hearts in, oh, sorry, the hearts in the jar are, uh, sparkly and kind of dimensional already and so what i thought i would do is put some string around here and put a tag over this tag you know i cut this whole thing out put it on another card maybe take the saying at the top back it and put it in dimensionals and and make it my own so it's more than just a flat surface um, but it's a way, so if I got this card in the mail, um, that's one of the things I could do with it is, uh, recycle it. Christmas cards are great for that. Um, we did a lot with the, with the recycling of those. All right. So I also use my die cutting machine and I cut out little, little hearts. But you can you can use stickers, uh, 
you can find hearts just about anywhere. You know, you can cut your own using a regular scissor. They don't have to be perfect. Uh, they just, you know, you want them to be yours. Think about the thing about a homemade card, um, a crafted card, is it, it shouldn't be perfect. You know, it, you don't want it to be machine made perfect. You want it to be some kind of a creation. At least I do. So I go with the mistakes. Some of my best cards came from mistakes, you know, because you have to fix them. You don't want to throw them away. You know, it, supplies are expensive. Anyway. I I did a painting one time for Keith Cuts, and it was a portrait. And one of the kids, I had spent weeks on it because I paint quickly. And then one of the kids got a hold of the black paint and thought, oh, I want to help and painted it all over the whole thing with black paint and I had to go back and fix it. Oh gosh, nightmare. You didn't just go with it and keep the black? No, 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 it wasn't, wasn't the, <laughs> my goal. Sometimes I do that, you know? Sometimes I just go, oh, what else could we do? What is the other cutter you were talking about? The what cutter? You said you made the little hearts? Oh, my die cutting machine. What is that? Oh, okay. Let me bring that in. Okay, this little beauty. It's called a die cutting machine. And this is a Sizzix one. It's got some weight to it. I'm going to turn it this way so that I can kind of get it in. So it comes with these plates. These are die cutting plates and they have different um, thicknesses for different kinds of dyes and different kinds of, of uh, embellishments that you can make. It, it comes with two of these pads, these, uh, what do they call these? Uh, platforms, I think they call this a platform. So usually you have two of these and you get a die. So this, this is a die that I used. Um, and then I have, you know, a bigger die. And what you do is you would put this down on on there and I do okay so I've got a piece of red card stock I put that on top of the dies the dies have I should I should let you know this this is the cutting edge if you turn it over it's flat there's no sticking out edge. So the sticking out edge is what's going to cut the paper and the pattern will emboss onto the paper. So I've got the flat side down and the cutting side up. You place your paper or cardstock on top and then you put the second platform. Now this this black path platform doesn't come with it. I bought this separate and it's supposed to last longer than your um, uh, greed platform because it, eventually they get so marked up with um, etchings and they warp that um, you have to replace them. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn my crank and as I do, it's going through. And I can feel when it stops. And I usually go backwards. And forward. Whoop, too close to the edge. Um, so here I have
cut out of this paper. Parts. And they still have some in there. In the back, there are little holes. So you take a pin and they just fall out. So there you go. So now I have, I have these hearts. This one has little, whoop, little holes in it. My dyslexia is showing uh, in different sizes. And I'll just put those to the side and I can use them later. So this is not a cheap setup. It, I have it, I have a, a more expensive one, which is bigger and it's electric. Um, it's electric. So I move this up. So um, I thought that would, you know, be easier for me to use, but it's so big when I do something small like that. And most of my dies to fit on my cards are small that it's just big and cumbersome because that whole thing has to go all the way through. And, um, but it does take a 12 inch piece of paper. And this one, this one will take a six inch wide piece of paper. So usually what I do is I, I, you know, cut my, um, eight, eight and a half by 11s in half. And, um, so that gives me a five inch wide. Um, I was going to say, uh, hello, Twitch user. We have a viewer on Twitch. Hello. Welcome. Ah, hey, hi. Thanks for being here. Uh, hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, okay, so let's make a card for Sandy. Um, okay. I'm going to put this aside quick. I was going to say, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, Goodness. So yeah. Okay. So usually I like to start with a shiny one for my first layer. And um, so this, this is... Uh, four and a half by five and, and seven eighths or three quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy Fisker's paper cutter. And I'm going to turn this down so you can see what I'm doing. And there's, there's a couple of ways to do this. This is the easier way is I put, there's a, a gully here, which is where the blade runs, right? So from here to the number one is one inch. Can you see this? Hold on. How's that? Is that better? Just turn the camera sideways and tilt it back up the way you had it. Just turn it sideways. There you go. Okay, okay. now it can see you. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So tilt it a little bit more so we get the whole thing. All right, so I take the card and this is, I'm gonna make a tent card. So I, I put it next to that line and I look to the side of the ruler, wait a minute. I look to the side where it stops and it stops at four and a quarter. So I'm gonna put my paper in and make it stop at four and a quarter. I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to go an eighth of an inch smaller. If I do an eighth of an inch small all around, I'll have a nice border of white from the card. So the card is eight and a quarter. I'm going to move it back one quarter inch and I'm going to cut. Okay. So now I have my width with a nice little border around it. Then I could take my card. I'm going to put it back. To that gully and measure it and it says five and a half. Well, we already knew that, but this is an easy way. So I come back a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, yeah, quarter of an inch. I'm sorry, did I say an eighth? A quarter of an inch. And I cut it the other way. 
And now I have the perfect layer. So now I can glue and glue this on. Not going all the way to the edge on the um, the shiny paper because sometimes it can show through. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up from here to here to here evenly. Um, and then the rest falls into place. Okay, so that's layer number one. Ready? Now I need to find layer number two. So let's see. Oh, I've got this piece of paper. It's got little polka dots on it. I don't know if you can see it. Now I want to go smaller than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this paper over. And I'm going to line it up where I want it. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark so that the, the red shiny part showing on this side and the red shiny part showing on this side will be the, be the same when I cut it. And then I'm going to do the same at the bottom. So I just put little pencil marks. Oh, wait, I don't have to measure. Now I line that pencil mark up with the gully. A little bit more. Okay. I'm going to cut it that way. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm going to cut it the other way. I'm lining the pencil mark up with the gully. So now... I have another layer, right? So let's put that layer on. The thing with this art glitter glue is it gives you a very fine line. Um, you can get into cracks and crevices like afterwards, if you missed a space, you can stick that little nose in there. Um, but it dries pretty fast. It gives you a little drying wiggle room, but it dries pretty fast. So I'm just centering this in the middle. So now we have that. So let's put some dimensionals on the backs of these little cutouts. And let's see. That's got two. That's got one. That's got two. So let's go with that. I'm going to put this one on without a dimensional. Here. And then this is the thicker dimensional. I'm going to put that dot on there. And I'm going to use the other one, which is a little smaller. Now you can use your finger nail to, to take these little, well, you can use, and I got this at the dollar store. It's got a needle at one end and a little presser at the other end. Um, and I just, you know. Oh, uh, I said hi. Who? Meg. Oh, hi, Meg. It's Meg. <laughs> My favorite Meg. <laughs> So now I have three dimensional cupcakes sticking out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of these little hearts, these other hearts that I have, the little ones I just cut out, and I'm just gonna scatter them around um, and just glue them down.
nhau I do have a white gel pen and you can use that to further decorate these little designs. You could write the word love, you. So there we have that. Now, again, this is a smaller card, so it doesn't have as many um, uh, layers. A little bit of glue escaped and got onto my shiny part. I'm just rubbing that off with my finger. Um, wait till it dries and rub it off with your finger. Um, otherwise, you'll set. But you, there you go. How's that? Quick and easy. So, what else I wanted to show you is the same card. had these cupcakes that don't have hearts on them. So now these can be a birthday card. And you can go with the pink colors. Um, so this is kind of what I would do uh, to see what kind of papers I want to choose and which ones will go with what um so that would be a pink card and that would be a happy birthday card you could also let me do a landscape you could also put a background on here let's say this had a background on here um, and just put a doily in here. There we go. And go with the red. And design a card that says happy birthday. So what I'm looking at is down at the bottom here, there's the white edge that goes around. Um, you want to put your designs and your patterns on something that's not as noisy um, so sometimes I'll put a white layer in between to just break it up um, I can use lace I can use ribbons um, let's see we got here oh I could put some ribbon on it Um, we have about five minutes left. Does anybody have any questions for Patty? And uh, your next show is going to be uh, the first Friday of every month, right? So yeah. if you enjoy this show, um, tune back into Cosmo TV. You can follow Patty B on her Facebook group page. And um, you can... Um, Get ready, or you can tune in uh, next. It was the first Friday of March will be the next episode. Yes, and please, you know, I love the comments, and you know, um, let me know what what you'd like to explore, what you'd like to um, to see, and um, we can do that. We can do that together. And um, I'm just thinking that if I'll just keep going with the basics on the stuff, you know, that I have for the cards and then we'll just go from there because once you understand how to use the tools and the adhesives and, you know, the process and what to look for when you buy or, you know, come across and go through the house. I mean, you can find a lot of stuff in the house, um, you know. Uh, so, um, Bob you know, Ross wants to know if you sell your cards, would you be making some for sale? I have someone who would be interested in some special made Easter cards. Yes. As a matter of fact, where did I put them? I have. Oh, I have. I have. Um, I must have not brought them out. 
I have cards. Oh, here they are. All right. So when I talk about more intricate cards, and they these are a little bit more whimsical. So this is what is called a um, belly band, right? Because it slides up and down. And then you open this up and the little window. So you can you can put pictures in here. You could, you know, write with your jelly, your white jelly pen or, you know, a black Sharpie or whatever you want. You could add more stickers. Um, if it's if it's for a child, you could put stickers in it. Um, yeah, I do sell my cards. Um, I sell them for five dollars. And um, once a year. And I sell five dollars each or six for twenty five. Yeah. Um, I like to give a lot of my I like to make stuff for people and give it away. So yeah. So anyway, stay tuned, Sam. You'll see how I, you know, if I do anything more with this. You sure you want it? And I could send it to Coral Lee or Earla. Anyway. No, I was just teasing you. I, I have I save all the cards you make and send it us and the girl you and know, the kids. I've heard, that. I've heard that people um and you can use your own art. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you do like a watercolor or something that you don't like, you can cut it up and use it as a background or use it, you know, as as a focal point. Um and I can maybe we'll do that next time. Maybe I'll bring out some of my failures. At work. So Megan's said Hallmark. Actually, I think I think Hallmark's way more expensive. They, they are. Have card, I see cards that are like ten dollars, nine dollars for one card. Yes. You know, I live in a retirement community, and so you know, a lot of incomes are limited. A, and B. You know me. I can't not create. I can't not make. And um, so I, you know, I just stockpile and sell. And, it, you know, hope to get enough money back for more supplies. Because like I said, some people like jewelry. I like art supplies. Keep that in mind. Mother's Day. <laughs> wink, wink. Well, we're <laughs> run out of time. All Thank right. You well, for go to fast when you're when you're playing this is play yes yeah so please thank you for joining me um and uh send me comments and i will um get back to you and you know please let me know if there's anything that you would like to uh, explore i'd be glad to do it with you thanks see you next thank month everybody thank you for watching bye for helping san Thank you.